Hello and welcome to Math 152. This is your first chapter, The Art of Problem Solving, and we're going to start with 1.1. So before you begin, make sure you have a copy of the notes in front of you printed off, or maybe a tablet to write on with the notes. Because as I go through them, um, you should be taking notes. There's places for you to write. In fact, your notes are going to look exactly like my notes. So let's get started. 1.1 um, is solving problems by inductive reasoning, which is characterized by drawing a general conclusion um, based on observation. And the conjecture or conclusion may or may not be true. Like, for example, in the past, um, whenever you've done all your homework for a class, you've gotten an A. So you might uh, make the conclusion that as long as you do all your homework for class, you'll get an A. Now, of course, that conclusion may or may not be true, but that's an example of using inductive reasoning. Deductive reasoning um, is also something that you use every day, and it's characterized by applying general principles to specific examples. For example, with that one, you know the old rule, you know, make sure you look both ways before you cross the road. Um, and if you do that, you'll be safe. So this is something that you actually do in life, you know, or you should be anyway. <laughs> when you cross the road, you look both ways, and generally you'll be safe, right? Um, so that's the deductive reasoning that we make the conclusion that as long as we look both ways before we cross, we'll be safe. Now again, it might not be true. There might be a vehicle that you don't see or somebody going too fast, um, and you might not be safe. But it's just reasoning. It's not supposed to be, um, it doesn't necessarily have to be true or false. So let's determine what, what type of reasoning is used for each one of these examples. If you take your medicine, you feel a lot better. You take your medicine, therefore you feel a lot better. So you want to think about it as, you know, is this a, um, something that you're basing on a series of examples or is it based on like a rule? And this one is more of a rule. It's you take your medicine and you'll feel better. So this is deductive. Let me try. Okay, good. <laughs> Oops. Now my writing with this uh, screen pen isn't always the best. So let me try this again. Okay. Marin's three first three children are boys. If she has another baby, it will be a boy. Now this is based on examples. So um, or observations. So we've observed that she's had three boys. So we're going to make the conjecture that our next one will also be a boy. So this is in inductive. All right, last one. For the past 53 years, a rare plant has bloomed in Colombia each summer, alternating between yellow and green flowers. Last summer, it bloomed with green flowers, so this summer it will bloom with yellow flowers. Again, it's based on example, so we're going to say that this is inductive. Example or observation, I should say. All right, for number four, we're going to use inductive reasoning to find the next term in the sequence. Um, so it goes 13, 18, 23, 28, 33. So you might notice that between 13 and 18, there's five. Between 18 and 23, there's five. And if you go all the way down the line with that, it's five for each one. So using inductive reasoning, you know, based on the observation that we see, we're going to assume that the next uh, number in that sequence is 38, because 33 plus 5 is 38. Next one is 32, 16, 8, 42, and 2. For that one, um, if we divide 
The first term by 2, we end up with 16. Divide that by 2, we get 8, and so on and so forth. So if we get the last 1, 2, and we divide that by 2, we get 1. Next one goes 2, 6, 12, 20, 30, 42. It's a little harder to figure out. Between the first two, you're adding 4. Between the second two, you're adding 6. Then 8, then 10, then 12. So what's happening there is, um, in fact, if you look at the difference between those numbers, which is something that's going to come up in a later section, but those are going up by 2 each time. So in other words, we add um, an additional, we start with 4, and then we added 2 to that, um, and added that to the next number. And then we added 2 more, and added that to the next number. So between 42 and the next number, we're going to have to add 14, making it 56. Okay, um, a list of equations is given. Use the list in inductive reasoning to predict the next equation, and then verify your conjecture. So with A, it looks like if I did 4, 3, 2, 1 times 9 minus 1, it should be 3 with 4 eighths after it. And with a quick check in the calculator, you can see that that is right. With B, it looks like you start going up and then you go back down. So we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 3, 2, 1. So the next one should be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Add it all together. And then go back down. So it's 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1. And that's going to equal 5 squared. And we can do a quick check. Let's see, 1 and 2 is 3, plus 3 is 6 plus 4 is 10, plus 5 is 15, 19, 22, 24, and then 25. So both sides are 25, so it works. Problem number 6 It's called the Gaussian method. It's an interesting story um, because Carl Gauss when he was a young boy, um, as punishment, his teacher wanted him, or the whole class, to add up the numbers from 1 to 100. And, like, probably a minute later, Gauss had the answer, while all the other students were laboriously adding 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 all the way up to 100. You know, he had it in less than a minute, because he figured out that if you you know, add up, you just write down all the numbers and you can, you know, skip a few in between and just say dot, dot, dot. And you look at the pairs, starting 1 and 100 makes 101, 2 and 99 makes 101, and so on and so forth. And you're going to have 50 of those pairs. So it turns out that 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus dot, 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 all the way to 100 is 50 times 101, which is um, 5,050. So we can use that same logic to find these sums. So with these, if I pair the first and the last, I get 401. And the number of pairs I'm going to have is just the last number divided by 2. So I'm going to have 200 pairs. So if I multiply 401 by 200, I get um, 80,200. All right, with B, each pair is 2,001. 2,000 divided by 2 is going to be 1,000. So it's 2,001 times 1,000 equals 2,000,000. Uh, Number 8 is very tricky. Um, so I think what I'm going to do with this one is give extra credit to anybody who can figure this one out. 
So I'm going to leave it open-ended and um, email me if you think you have the next row, if you figured out the pattern. And I'll probably make it a couple extra bonus points on the test. All right, number nine is also something that I'm going to um, leave for you to do. It's a, a fun little trick you can play on somebody, especially an older person that doesn't want to tell you how old they are. Um, so they, they write down their age and they hide it from you, but then you ask them a bunch of questions, and in the end you'll be able to figure out how old they are without actually knowing. So that's it for 1.1. The next thing to do is to work on the, um, the practice um, exercises for 1.1. Or ask me any questions. Um, well really, if you had any questions about this lecture, please post them to the discussion board because um, that way if other people have questions, the same question, they can um, look at that.